When you think of immediate threats to our national security, probably think of Ebola, ISIS, maybe even Russia, but climate change? Well, the Secretary of Defense declaring climate change an immediate threat this week. And Mike, you say that's one costly declaration. David, Hegel is simply pushing the president's far left agenda. This is the same agenda that went out and said Al Qaeda has been decimated. No, that's not true. ISIS is the JV team. No, that's not true. Same thing with this. It's simply not the government's job to use the military to combat climate change. And Rick, according to a recent poll, here's what Americans consider most important to their interests in terms of immediate security threats. One, economy jobs. Two, terrorism, immigration. You have to go way down to the bottom. Only 3% there at the very bottom think climate change is, is an, of immediate concern. Yeah, look, I will acknowledge I'm a little bit troubled by the word immediate. Uh, maybe it's how you define it. I would define it in the next few years, and I don't really believe that this is a national security problem in the next few years. However, if, and I'm underlining the word if so we don't have to have that debate, if you believe that there's climate change taking place, whether naturally or man-made, then it's not that hard to see how that does translate into situations that would in fact be a problem for our national security. All right, security. well, Rich, let's, let's really spell it out. This is specifically what the Defense Department said, and I'm quoting them now. Climate change will affect the Department of Defense's ability to defend the nation and poses immediate risks to U.S. national security. That came out right in the middle of all these genuine crises that are happening right now. Well, David, the immediate risk is that the Democrats are going to lose the Senate, and the only hope they have of keeping the Senate is to rally the base. So what this is all about is rallying the base. And Chuck Hagel should be ashamed of himself. You know, he was once an independent Republican, and now he's a, a puppet for a, a desperate administration. Uh, Sabrina, why the Pentagon? Why the Defense Department of all places? I mean, if, if, as Rich says, this is all political about uniting the base before the election, get some other department to do it, maybe EPA or something. Well, no, Rich took the words right out of my mouth. The reality is we have midterm elections less than a month away, and most Americans are now favoring the GOP when it comes to foreign affairs. Well, if you're not winning, if you're not leading on a Ebola and you're not leading on ISIS, you have to find some to lead on, and Democrats want to take the climate change, you know, uh, portfolio to the American people. But this is simply alarmism that's run amok. It's terrible, and it's insulting to American voters. Yeah, you know, the weather's not helping his argument, but more broadly, I think this speaks to a bureaucrat desperately in search of a mission, and it should scare people regardless of their views on global warming. The U.S. military exists to protect us from foreign intruders, and if it's going to get into science, that also means it's going to get into things that, that put our troops in harm's way. We've got to streamline their mission precisely because we want to be safer. This is dangerous. And Mike, getting to a broader point of what the purpose of government is, it is to protect us. It's gone into all sorts of nanny state uh, variations of that in terms of, you know, protecting us from cradle to grave, but just protecting us from immediate threats. We do have those threats, Ebola, ISIS, etc. Is, is there any circumstance under which climate change could be considered an immediate threat? David, I really don't think West Point is going to start teaching the people that go there <laughs> how to dispose of plastic bottles or tell them not to use fossil fuels. All the brave men and women who have defended this country over the years did so because they were taught they knew how to fight. This whole thing, this, this world that Obama lives in, it's Alice in Wonderland. It has nothing to do with the real world. And that's really what's posing the big danger to this country. Our president lives in the Alice in Wonderland world. That's, and, and, that's and Rick, nobody knows how to prioritize as well as the military does. The military has to prioritize a lot of things. Are we really in the, in the business now of having our military take part? Even assuming for a moment that there is some danger from climate change, is there, is there any reason the military should be involved with that? Well, a, a couple of things. First to Michael, I have to say, it may interest you to know I've been hired to teach bottle disposal at West Point <laughs> next semester. That, that aside, uh, look, and to Rich's point, the chart that David showed us just a few moments ago disproved politics of what you're saying. It's the lowest thing on the list. If you're trying to get political advantage with the Democratic base, there ain't many people in there to convince. So well, that's the Rich, second Rich, what do you thing. say about that? But 
Look, because well, these elections, this is going to be a razor-close election for the Senate. On the margin, you know, the hardcore uh, supporters of the administration need to be rallied because they're dispirited well, by the economy and all other Hold things on. right now. Final word from Sabrina. Go ahead, Sabrina. Well, also, I mean, this has been part of their agenda for many years now. Back in 2010, they first put climate change as part of the Defense Department's strategic planning vision. Um, I just think it's interesting that they're now sort of trotting it out there in the weeks before the election. So, obviously, there's some kind of political motivation, and I don't put it past Democrats to know exactly who to target. Last word from Sabrina. Thank you, gang. Well, gas prices are plunging.